Mr. Stein, you're recognized. Mr. Chairman, thank you for the opportunity to testify at this hearing. Um, the subsidies in the misnamed Inflation Reduction Act, which we are examining today, are worse than merely misguided industrial policy because the industry sig singled out for the most generous subsidy, which namely the wind, solar, and batteries industries, are not actually domestic industries. The inputs and components that will build the subsidized green energy system envisioned by the IRA will be coming from foreign countries, especially China, which thoroughly dominates both the solar and battery industries and is a major part of the wind industry. The IRA thus discards even the usual justifications for industrial policies, such as domestic industry or security. Uh, the, the, this green industrial policy actually seeks to destroy domestic energy and replace it with foreign energy. The policy set forward in the IRA will tax our children to pay for China for green energy to replace the oil, natural gas, and coal that we currently produce here in the United States. Because of the uncapped nature of the IRA tax credits, there's actually no way to know how much taxpayers are eventually going to be on the hook for. Uh, additionally, despite some of the IRA subsidies getting firm end dates, both the production tax credit and the investment tax credit could hang around for decades, as they are set to phase out only after a certain emissions target has been met. Most forecasts don't see that threshold being met until the 2040s or even later. If the prospect of our children and grandchildren paying for these vast subsidies for decades to come isn't bad enough, these subsidies will ultimately be funneled into the hands of Chinese companies. The problem with wind, solar, and batteries is that they require an enormous amount of minerals to build in the first place. For example, a typical electric car requires six times the mineral inputs of a conventional car, mainly due to the battery module. An onshore wind plant requires nine times more mineral resources than a gas-fired plant. Because of this, since 2010, the average amount of minerals needed for a new unit of power generation capacity has increased by 50% as the share of renewables uh, in new investment has been rising. Unlike oil and natural gas, which are found and produced around the world, the production of the main green minerals is quite concentrated. In 2019, for example, the top three extractors of copper and nickel produced more than half of global production alone. And the top three extractors of cobalt, rare earths, and lithium produced 75 to 85% of global production. In contrast, the top three producers of oil and natural gas, which both include the United States, produce less than 50% of total global production. But this mining concentration actually pales in comparison to the, compar the concentration in processing, where China thoroughly dominates. China now processes the majority of the world's nickel, cobalt, lithium, graphite, manganese, and rare earths, which are all key inputs for wind turbines, solar panels, and batteries. For several of those categories, such as graphite, manganese, and rare earths, China accounts for 80 to 100% of global production. China's dominance goes beyond the processing itself. China also controls the manufacturing and production of lithium ion battery cells, anodes and cathodes, and polysilicon, wafers, crystalline silicon cells, and solar modules. What this means is that green energy is truly made in China. Thus, the vast spending from IRA subsidies will be spent on Chinese products and inputs and enrich Chinese companies. Now, the IRA did include some incentives to try and bring back many of these, input, make many of these inputs domestically. But the process of opening a new mine stretches for many years, if not decades. New processing facilities will unlikely to meet UI, U.S. environmental standards, which frankly is part of why a lot of this production happens in China uh, today. Some final assembly of imported Chinese components will probably happen in the U.S. and often foreign-owned facilities in order to gain the IRA, IRA subsidy eligibility. But that facade cannot hide what is really actually happening, which is all a long way of saying that green energy will not be made in the USA anytime soon. To subsidize green energy, energy today is to subsidize China. For decades, the primary goal of American energy policy has been security of supply, to ensure that the United States can rely on itself for energy supplies in the event of a conflict or crisis. Just in the last five years, we have just about achieved that energy security that had been so elusive for so long. The U.S. is a net exporter of oil, natural gas, coal, and refined products. And what oil we still import mostly comes from Canada and Mexico. Yet the avowed goal of the IRA is to throw away that hard-earned security and replace our entire energy system with inferior green alternatives sourced from overseas. To put this in context, at the peak in 2001, the United States relied on the Middle East for 23% of our oil needs. That was viewed as a national security crisis. The U.S. currently imports 74% of our rare earth needs from China, with many other green mineral needs over 50%. There is no prospect of that changing in the near future. Yet we are intentionally seeking to increase reliance on these Chinese energy sources. The security issue goes beyond merely China's control of the inputs of the green energy system. An electric grid is more reliant on intermittent uh, sources is more fragile and expensive. This weaker, more expensive grid is more susceptible to failures, be they weather events, human error, or deliberate damage, because there is not a strong reserve of stable, dispatchable generation. The IRA energy subsidies are pushing the U.S. towards more expensive and less reliable electricity, while also discarding an American energy security in favor of dependence on China. That we get this supposedly in return for a small degree of reduction in carbon dioxide emissions, even though the magnitude of that reduction is questionable once you calculate Chinese uh, manufacturing and the overbuilding of the grid. 
might seem incredible to the average voter to believe that we'd be uh, cons consciously replacing domestic energy with unreliable, expensive, foreign controlled energy, but that is the net effect of the subsidies in the IRA. Thank you for the, the opportunity. Thank you, sir.